What's good, y'all? So in this video, I'm going to react to Mr. Ballin. This video is about a haunted cemetery. Um, I haven't done a Mr. Ballin video in a long time. I really enjoyed them. They were just t sometimes time consuming, so it was hard to like fit them in. Um, but I have been like I'm not really seeing min many things to react to or th not knowing what um, my viewers want to see. So we just trying stuff right now. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed these videos. Um, my personal beliefs is God I think goes for real. I'm not going to lie. It is what it is. Um, I even had like the situation where I was in this house or the house that I lived in from two years old to 14 years old. And I moved out on Halloween. I don't know. A lot of shit was weird. Anyways, and there was a lot of shit that happened. And I mean, it won't just to me. It was to my family. It was to my friends. It was to my brother's friends. It was to people just, just came in the house. It was just weird shit. And then when I found out that somebody had, an insane woman had died before and something happened to her keys. I don't know. I said, that might be a story time. It might be a story time. But anyways, um, so yeah. Looking forward to this. I'm wondering what he's talking about. Let's get into it. Late one night in November of 1999, a 66-year-old minister named Colin Grant opened up the iron gates of a cemetery called Greyfriars Kirkyard. The cemetery was one of the oldest and most famous cemeteries in Edinburgh, Scotland. Now, the cemetery was basically pitch black. However, there were a few old iron lanterns that lined the cobblestone path that cut through the cemetery. And so Colin pushed open these big gates and he stepped onto this path and he began walking. And on either side of him, for as far as he could see, were all these headstones, some of which dated back to the 1600s. And as wow. he kept walking, he could see up ahead, even in the darkness, the huge Gothic style church that sat right in the center of the cemetery. Looks terrifying. Now, at first glance, this cemetery just kind of looked like a pretty typical old cemetery, albeit a pretty spooky one but mm -hmm. to Colin he knew there was far more than just a graveyard here deep underground in the cemetery below where all the people have been buried at their headstones was basically another cemetery there was like this mass burial pit that the cemetery had been built on top of and in this lower level cemetery which in no way was marked I mean this is basically a hidden mass burial were thousands of people who had been starved and tortured to death hundreds oh of years God. ago. Oh my God. And so Colin stopped for a second on the path and just kind of stared ahead at this church. And for a second, he thought about just turning and leaving because he did not want to be here. He was really only here because the city had begged him. And that's what you got to do. You have to listen, listen to your intuition all the time, all the time. That should be telling you shit. It's like, it's like a fortune teller type him shit. To come, which meant he could speak to the dead. And so the city, in desperation, had asked him to come to this cemetery tonight and perform an exorcism. And By so as himself? much as Colin did just want to turn around and leave, he knew he really had a duty here, not just to the city, but really to the people of the city. Because if he didn't do this exorcism, there was a good chance more people were going to get hurt. The only thing that was making Colin a little bit less afraid in this moment was he actually was not alone in the cemetery. Oh. There were two people with him. There was a journalist and a photographer from a local newspaper who were basically tagging along to document this exorcism. And so after taking a minute to compose himself, Colin continued walking deeper into the cemetery with these two following behind him. And then before reaching the big church, Colin left the path and began cutting through the grass, passing by different headstones on the way to perhaps the most infamous building in the entire cemetery, the Black Mausoleum. The Black Mausoleum was this tall stone crypt with a rounded top that had been built sometime in the late 1600s. And as Colin got closer to this pretty creepy looking building that sat basically on the side of the cemetery, Colin began to feel this really intense sense of dread come over him. And the closer he got, that dread began to kind of manifest itself in like a pit in his stomach. And eventually he began feeling really scared of this building. And eventually Colin actually had to fully stop about 10 or so feet away from the building because he just felt like he couldn't go any closer. It felt evil. And then Colin turned and looked at his companions, the journalist and photographer, to see if maybe they were reacting to this mausoleum. But the two mm -hmm. of them were just standing there with blank expressions on their face, like obviously not thinking that anything sinister was happening here. You know, even though the city had asked the minister to be here to perform this exorcism in this mausoleum, you know, it didn't. Because some people don't believe that type of stuff. So they're just like, whatever, bro. Like, they, they're not going to think of it as, oh, like, this is some serious shit. They're just gonna be like, bro, these people are crazy, but let me tag along for like a free trip or to get paid or something like that. But they don't really believe it. Didn't mean everybody believed what was going on here. And clearly these two didn't. They were totally skeptical. But this didn't offend Colin. He was used to people not believing in the things he believed in. Yeah. And he knew as soon as he actually began his work, you know, doing this exorcism, they would change their mind. <laughs> and so at some point, Colin told the photographer that, hey, you know, I'm gonna go in the mausoleum now because I have to do the exorcism. Before I do, 
take a picture of the mausoleum. And so the photographer just raised her camera and took a picture of the mausoleum. Colin thanked her, and then he turned and began walking towards the building. And when he got right in front of it, he looked up and he read the name across the top of the crypt. And it said George Mackenzie. And as Colin read that, he could feel his heart rate start to spike. So back in the late 1600s, George Mackenzie was a Scottish lord who worked for the King of England. They, be weird. they, they used to wear them wigs. They, they, never mind. All I'm saying is a little hypocritical. Certain mofos be talking about a certain community of people wearing wigs and then the people used to always wear them. Laws. But at the time, these laws were very unpopular. And there was one group called the Covenanters 18 who hated these laws down. so much that they actually mounted a full-scale rebellion in 1679. But their rebellion failed miserably and this is when George Mackenzie came in. He captured over a thousand Covenanters and he marched them all into this huge field, which would later become the Greyfriars Kirkyard Cemetery, but at the time it was just a big open field, and he held them there, and for weeks he had these people starved and tortured and mutilated, and if anybody tried to run or resist because they knew they were doomed, I mean, they all knew they were gonna die here, if anybody took off, he would capture them, cut their head off, and then place their head on a spike around the perimeter of this field. Oh, so he was Until crazy. after several weeks, the entire field is just ringed with decaying bodies and bloody heads on spikes. And so after a few months of this, basically everybody in that field had been murdered in some horrible way by George Mackenzie. And their bodies were all dumped into a mass grave uh -huh. in Greyfriars Kirkyard, then covered over, and then, you know, hundreds of years later, a proper cemetery would be built right on top of that mass grave. And then when George Mackenzie died later on, I mean, he lived a normal, happy, full life after after doing all these horrible things, they built him this beautiful mausoleum in Greyfriars Kirkyard. And so here's this horrible person, George mm. McKenzie, who's a mass murderer, and he's put to rest in this beautiful mausoleum, just, you know, feet away from this mass grave of all these people he killed. For almost 300 years That's after McKenzie was buried, Greyfriars Kirkyard was quiet. It was not considered a haunted place. That all changed, though, in 1998. So that was one year before Colin showed up to perform this exorcism. That year, in 1998, a homeless man broke into the Black Mausoleum and he fell through the floor and landed in one of those mass burial pits of those people Mackenzie had killed. And apparently, basically right after this happened, visitors to the cemetery began reporting the same thing. That any time they were in or near the Black Mausoleum, they'd get pushed or tugged on or scratched or burned or even strangled. I mean, people were coming out of the cemetery terrified. And so quickly, people in town began to speculate about, you know, what was going on. And I'm not gonna lie, if I died like that and the person who did it and did it to so many other people that it's just just a terrible person is just living a full happy life in their psycho their psychosis hey when i get buried everybody that come near me gotta get it i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie that's what i'm saying sometimes karma don't work right because what you mean Cause what, what do you mean he, he lived a full life and he was out there doing what he was doing through the floor in the mausoleum that that had released George Mackenzie's evil spirit and his spirit was responsible for all these attacks. Are so you sure it wasn't the other people? <laughs> What? It went on like this for it's about a year him? until finally this young woman was found outside of the Black Mausoleum, unconscious, looking like she'd been strangled. And when she came to, she had no memory of what happened. And so people assumed this had to be another attack by the spirit of George Mackenzie. And so by this point, the city was totally fed up with this. They didn't know what to do. And so they said, you know what? Let's just try an exorcism. Let's have someone go into that mausoleum and literally confront the spirit of George Mackenzie and banish him. Get him I've, out never, I've never heard of an exorcism when it wasn't like a person that was possessed. Like I thought it had to be a person. I don't I didn't know they could just get rid of a spirit. Or I mean I guess. I guess. I don't know. Out of here and stop this madness. And so ultimately Colin was hired to perform this exorcism. To the photographer and journalist who've literally come out here to document what he's gonna do, and now he's not gonna do it. But as Colin turned around to basically blurt out this really embarrassing news that hey guys, we gotta leave. He realized he actually knew something else he could do that in many ways might actually be better than going into this mausoleum and doing an exorcism. And so without saying anything, Colin just turned and began speed walking over to this big field that was not too far away from the black mausoleum. And when he got there, he just began chanting prayers and walking in circles, flicking holy water, didn't explain anything he was doing to the journalist and the photographer who'd followed him over there and are just watching him like, what's going on here? They got no idea. He's not clarifying. And for hours, this is what he did. He just kind of paced in this field, you know, just kind of doing what looked like stereotypical, you know, exorcism some type behavior and that's what the journalist and the photographer assumed he was doing and so as Colin did whatever he was doing in this field the photographer whose name was Susan Burrell just began doing her job you know again thinking that he was doing the taking exorcism pictures. and so she just started taking pictures of him and then finally around 2 a.m. so again this has been hours of Colin doing this thing he's doing Colin just abruptly stops and walks over to Susan and the journalist and Colin looks horrible he's totally haggard his hair is all disheveled he's sweating he's pale and his head is down and he says to the two women I he's failed 
He explained oh. to them that his original intention was to go into the Black Mausoleum and confront George Mackenzie's spirit head on and banish him from the cemetery. However, he had had a change of heart at the door and decided to go this other route, which was to go to this big open field in the middle of the cemetery and attempt to free the spirits of all those Covenanters who had been tortured and killed by George Mackenzie. Colin's thinking was, you know, if I can free all of these poor tortured souls, that maybe once they're gone, George Mackenzie's spirit will also go away. And while, according to Colin, he was able to free, you know, 200 some odd trapped souls, he said there were many more that still needed to be freed, and he just didn't have the strength, or he couldn't do this right now. And just come back, come on. He said, you know, rest and do this at another time. Mm -hmm. Now, the journalist and the photographer were totally over this and did not care at all. It's 2 a.m., <laughs> they don't really understand what he was doing, they don't really know if this was the exorcism or if it was something else, but to them, they're like, okay, fine, we'll get out of here, it's late, it's not a big deal. And so the three of them, they began walking out of the cemetery, and right when they got in front of the church, so basically between where the Black Mausoleum was and where that field was, where Colin had been for the past several hours, Colin abruptly stopped, and he told the journalist and the photographer that actually, you know what, he had a little strength left, and he felt like it was his duty to try this again, because he knew- I know they was looking at him like, <laughs> what is you talking about, sir? Crazy? I know they- well, They more souls, to... and so he was gonna give it another go. And so the journalist and the photographer are like, Okay, and so Colin, you know, he gets out his Bible and he begins kind of doing the same thing he was doing out in the field, you know, walking around, chanting Bible verses, spraying holy water all around. And then at some point, for reasons he did not explain to either Susan or the journalist, he pulled out 12 candles from his backpack that he had brought along and he put them in a circle on the ground right in front of this church. It also encompassed this big Celtic cross that was on the ground. And Colin was inside of the circle and he lit all these candles and the whole time again, you know, he's chanting out these Bible verses and he stands up and right after all the candles have been lit, Suddenly, Susan and the journalist noticed that the candles begin to flicker. And it's not windy at all inside the cemetery. Like, they shouldn't be flickering. And at the same time, Colin seemed to sense that something was happening around him, and he turned his whole body, his whole presence, and he looked over at the Black Mausoleum and began chanting these Bible verses louder and louder, like he was aiming them at the Black Mausoleum. And as he was doing this, the candles were flickering more and more and more, and at some point, Colin actually picked up one of these candles and kind of held it out at the Black Mausoleum. And so at this point, the journalist and the photographer, Susan, they're sensing that something weird is happening here. Like, this is spooky, what they're seeing. Like, why are the candles flickering? What's going on with Colin? Like, what's happening here? And for a minute, the two of them kind of abandoned their actual job, which is to document what they're seeing, and they just stood there kind of witnessing this totally bizarre event. But then Susan sort of broke out of it, she lifted up her camera, and right as Colin is passionately chanting out these verses, she takes a picture of him, and the second she does, the flash lights up the cemetery, and then after the flash goes away, Colin, it was like the light went out on him, and he just crumpled to the ground. And so the journalist immediately ran over to Colin to see if he was okay. And Colin, who's like barely conscious at this point, he just kept repeating, this is going to kill me. This is going to kill me. And so Susan was about to run over and join her colleague and make sure Colin was okay. But before she did, she glanced down at her camera to see the picture she had taken of Colin right before he collapsed. And as she glanced at it, she couldn't believe what she was looking at. At first she thought, you know, maybe this is some trick of the light. Like this can't be right. But then she zoomed in on the photo. And when she looked closely, she screamed. Here's the photograph that Susan took. As you can see, Colin the minister is standing there with the candle outstretched. Is there a mopo in the window? Am I, am I tweaked? Do I not see? And behind him is the big church. And on the church, on the left side, there are windows. Now, this church was locked up. Nobody was inside the church at the time. Mopo but you can in the clearly window. see in the oh. left window, there is a figure in that window looking out at Colin. Now, of course, this is not evidence enough to make everybody believe that, oh, that must be George Mackenzie's spirit staring out at it's Colin. Somebody. That's the reason Colin collapsed. But I'll tell you, this photograph is not the end of the story. Remember, after Colin collapsed to the ground after this photo was taken, the journalist ran over and all Colin kept saying was, this is gonna kill me, this is gonna kill me. Well, it would turn out he'd be right. Not long after this failed exorcism, Colin would die inexplicably. His death would come as a total shock to his friends and family. No one has ever been able to debunk the photo that Susan took that showed that dark figure in the window of the church, meaning nobody knows what that was. The church really was supposed to be empty and locked, and so how is there somebody or something in the window? Nobody knows. A lot of people think that could be the evil spirit of George McKenzie, you know, striking Colin down and Susan managed to capture it on film, but you know, it's up to you if you believe that or not. But I will say to this day, people go into that cemetery and come out with scratch marks on them and you know, claiming they were pushed or pulled or strangled. And so that cemetery is considered to be one of the most haunted places in the world. And George McKenzie's spirit, who supposedly haunts it, is considered to be one of the most dangerous poltergeists in the world as well. Before I became a professional oh, strange- Oh damn, this was like a, like a kind of fucked up ending. I'm gonna need a documentary about this place. I'm gonna need all types of, I need more. I need more. This is very interesting. This is very upsetting that it still seems that no one get a uh, hoodlum of folks in the conjuring that be going to places and they go and they exercise it. Um, get the mofos there. 
because <clears throat> at least we know because I was going to say yeah, it's crazy he lived a good life and then he just died peacefully well it seems like he's in hell he's like a demon or some shit so that's not the same thing but I don't know I need to I need to know more this can't be the end of the story where the good person that's trying to help save the people die too huh no mm-mm Mm -mm, mm -mm. Give me a documentary. Give me, give me a, 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 a ten-part series. Um, with actors. Give me, give me, give me everything. Give me the real shit. Give me the, the portrayal of the shit. I don't know. I just need more. I need more. This is weird. And there's so many. I've heard so many different stories like this, on, on like the paranormal tip. And like I said, if you don't believe in it, then you're kind of just watching to watch. Like that's kind of like a fantasy type thing, which I think is cool too. But as somebody who does believe in it. Uh, it's like makes me feel like ugh, inside I ain't gonna lie but anyways um so yeah this was dope this like made me reminded me why I was missing these videos so much because I wasn't watching them on my proper time either I was just so busy so busy but I'm gonna I'm gonna fit one or two in every few weeks um just because I enjoy doing it I don't care really if it makes my viewers happy love that but if somebody's like eh, I need to react to this because I want to bitch now what next anyways y'all come and subscribe follow me on instagram follow me on tiktok i'll see y'all in the next one